So I got through my general medicine pretty quickly and was oriented towards neurology and had an extremely, um, extremely wise, even though quite young and highly energetic mentor at the time who, when he knew I was getting ready to go on to the further phases of my career, said, so are you still interested in, in research? And I said, yes. And so what would you like to do? I said, well, you know, you know I'm interested in neuroscience, neurology. And he said, well, go along and see this chap, Terry Jones, in the MRC cyclotron unit. I said, uh, OK, what, what does he do? And he said, he's got some sort of machine that looks at the brain. Fine, I said, I'll go and have a look. And come back after lunch and tell me if you're going to do it or not. <laughs> so again, it was one of those decisions made on the spot which completely changed my life because I met Terry, who really didn't trust me at all. There's a very nice um, fellow from Italy there called Gianluigi Lenzi, who's become a dear, dear friend and is professor of neurology at Rome now, uh, who also really resented me coming along because he and Terry had you know, formed a good, tight group and they were... They were beginning to use oxygen-15, one of these positron emitting traces, and Terry had just managed to convince the MRC to give him money to get a positron emission tomograph, or a camera, as I used to call it. And here was this upstart turning up who'd done neurology for a year at the Hammersmith and never bothered to go and see them. So I sort of understood why they might be a little resentful of being foisted on with this fellow. That was 1979, and uh, so, so I got stuck in and the first thing I had to do was, was I mean, I was delighted because this was the first machine of its type. And it was only a year after the French had put a machine in and only a, probably a couple of years after the Americans had started working Phelps and, and uh, Rakel over in, um, in St. Louis and, and then subsequently Los Angeles for, for Phelps. And I had to get stuck into the, you know, the physiology of the brain. And it was absolutely fascinating. I mean, you, there, there was a story that started off with Seymour Ketty in, in The War and then 48, a magnificent paper about blood flow and how you could measure it in the human brain. They were talking non-invasive then, but they were sticking needles into arteries, carotid arteries and, and, and jugular veins and measuring arteriovenous oxygen differences and e extractions of oxygen as the, as the blood flowed through the cerebral capillaries and out again into the venous side and relating that to blood flow. Then the annus mirabilis of our whole discipline, 1973, Hounsfield, of course, the first C CT scanner in, 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 uh, in London. The first one was down in um, St. George's and then the second one very quickly afterwards at Queen Square. And I began to use that as a young, as a young house officer, you know, a young doctor, and was learning anatomy on the one hand from these blurred images of the human brain, and on the other hand, spending the night with Brian Kendall, who was the neuroradiologist at the time, stuffing needles into people's carotids and then pulling back a bit to get into the superior vena cava, injecting dyes in order to diagnose horrible tumours in their brain. I mean, all that disappeared almost, almost overnight. It was a wonderful, wonderful time. But the principle it established of being able to examine the distribution of... Um, the, the, the density or the activity in the brain quickly, very quickly, was understood by Phelps, by Terpagosian, and then bang, away they went and started creating the first PET scanners, Terpagosian particularly putting them all together. And Terry Jones, who was there at the time, realised this was going to be a very big thing and came back and fought like hell to, to get something, getting lots of good preliminary data with gamma cameras and things like that. And bang, the machine arrived on the 1st of July, 1979, and I arrived on the 1st of August, 1979. So it was a concatenation of events which just put me in, in a place at a time. Uh, people aren't ever as lucky as that more than once in their lifetime. <laughs>